All right, so this section is on work and kinetic energy in rotating objects. We already got the formula for the kinetic energy for rotating objects, which is one half I times omega squared, and we identified the rotation inertia for various objects. This was analogous to the kinetic energy for translating objects, which was one half mv squared. So I'll show you another way to come up with this. Um, because it'll be useful in the context of work. If you remember when we talked about work, we said the net work done is equal to the net force um, times the distance, right? Um, we also had an angle theta in there, but for now we'll say that the distance is moved in the direction of the object. And so, um, so I, I'll leave the I'll leave the cosine of the angle out. And so for rotating objects, we'll say uh, the work done is the net force times uh, delta S, where delta S is the, is the distance you moved rotationally, right? If, you, if, if this is delta theta and this is uh, R, the distance you traveled was delta S. Right? And so if we grab that form, we can say, well, look, the net work done is equal to, and so I'm going to do a little fancy math here. I'm going to say R times F net times delta S over R. In other words, I, I multiply and divide it by R, and then this little piece is equal to delta theta from the definition of radians we had. And so this is R times F net times delta theta, right? Except R times F net is just equal to the torque. Right, there we had a sine theta in there, but we'll say that the, we'll, we'll set that aside for now. We'll say, look, the, um, the, uh, the angle between the force and the radius is 90 degrees, and so uh, the sine theta is one. And so this gives us the net work is equal to the torque times the angle. <laughs> and I would have argued that you could have guessed that, because if it was force times distance, the rotational equivalent of that is torque times angle. And so you could have just seen that right from the beginning if you, uh, if you wanted to. If you remember, uh, the, the, the equation we came out with for torque was torque is equal to I alpha. This was the equivalent of F equals MA, right? The rotational equivalent of force is equal to the rotational equivalent of mass times the rotational equivalent of acceleration. And so this is Newton's second law Right. And so we can write this as W net equals I alpha theta instead of the torque times theta. And then we can go all the way back to the way we calculated kinetic energy. We could say, well, if you remember this equation, V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A X minus X naught. That was from our kinematics. That was the equation we called equation 5 back in chapter two maybe, there was an equivalence to that W squared, omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus two alpha times theta minus theta naught, right? And that was this thing for rotation. And so we can solve this for alpha and we get um, alpha is equal to, um, well, let me just, let me just do it this way. I'm going to pull this over to one side and divide both sides. So, so let me write it this way. Omega squared minus omega naught squared is equal to 2 alpha times theta minus theta naught. We'll pick, um, we'll just say, um, we'll just pick theta naught equals zero. And we'll say, look, um, uh, alpha times theta is equal to one half omega squared minus one half omega naught squared. So I drop the theta naught, I just pick it equal to zero, and then divide both sides by two, and that gives me alpha theta equals this. And so this gives me W net, the net work is equal to I times one half omega squared minus one half one half omega naught squared. 
and that gives me one half i omega squared minus one half i omega naught squared, which is equal to the change in kinetic energy due to rotation. This is exactly the work energy theorem we came up when we were doing translational motion. We said the net work done was the change in kinetic energy for translation. The exact same work gives you the net work done in a rotational system is equal to the change in kinetic energy of a rotational system, and that is your kinetic energy. Kinetic energy for rotation is one half i omega squared. This is the, the, the similar version of this for translation is how we came up with that as the formula for um, uh, kinetic energy due to translation. So in this problem, a, gr a grindstone, which is just a solid cylinder, is spun by a force of 200 newtons that's exerted uh, a tangent to the surface. So, so there's going to be a force here. That's our force F. It's tangent to the edge, and it's going to be uh, um, the radius of this thing r is equal to 0 0.32 meters, right? And so A, if the force If the force acts through an angle of one, one radian, what's the work done? So the force is going to go, you know, I'll say this is theta, or you can call it delta theta, it doesn't matter. So the force is pushed along here, right, always staying perpendicular. So it's like somebody took their hand and kind of pushed it that way, right, uh, through an angle theta, which is one radian. And we said that the net work done is equal to the torque times the angle. You could also write this, you know, the torque times the change in angle, if you want. Um, and so, uh, so we, we've got to calculate the torque. The torque is R times F times sine theta, right? And again, there's my F and there's my R, and they're perpendicular because it says that the force is exerted tangent to the edge of the circle, and so that's just R times F. And so that means my net work done is just R times F times theta, which is 0 0.32 meters times 200 newtons times one radian, which is uh, 64 newton meters. That's the torque. And so, um, I can ask the question B. So we say, what's the angular velocity of the grindstone after the push if it starts from rest? And so one of the things we know is that, you know, when we put a force on something, it accelerates, or when we put a torque on something, it, accel it accelerates angularly. And so we can, we can, I'll have to erase part A here. You can go back and look at it if you need to, right? The torque was 64 Newton meters. We can say, look, um, omega squared is equal to omega naught squared plus two alpha 
theta minus theta naught, right? That's the formula we had. This guy is zero because it starts from rest, and this guy is zero because we pick it that way. And so omega, um, which is what is the angular <coughs> velocity? This is the thing that's omega. That's what they're asking us for. After the push, if it starts from rest, rest means omega naught is zero, and so this is just the square root of two alpha theta, right? Because omega squared is two alpha times theta, so omega is just the square root of that. But alpha is just equal to, um, uh, if you remember this formula, the torque is equal to the rotational inertia times alpha, and so alpha is just equal to um, the uh, the torque divided by the rotational inertia. Right. This is again the rotational equivalent of mass, and so this becomes omega is equal to the square root of 2 times the torque times theta over the rotational inertia. Right. Um, we've already calculated the torque, that was 64 newton meters, this is one radian, we need to know what I is, and if you remember I for a solid cylinder, is one half m r squared, right? And so, so for our case, I'll just call it i, is uh, that makes it one half times, um, I've got to give you the mass of the cylinder at this point. It's uh, the mass is 85 kilograms, and so 85 kilograms times uh, 0 0.32 meters squared, I get I equals uh, 4.35 kilogram meters squared, and this gives me omega is equal to the square root of 2 times 64 Newton meters times one radian divided by 4.35 kilogram meter squared, and that gives me uh, That gives me um, 5.4 radians per second. So this is the angular velocity it has after I've given it the push, right? Assuming it's frictionless. And finally, question C. What is this kinetic energy at this point, right? Well, the kinetic energy for rotation, which is all it has, because it's just spinning in place, is just one half i times omega squared, and so that's equal to one half times 4.35 kilogram meter squared times 5.4 radians per second squared. We get the kinetic energy for rotation is uh, 64 joules. Maybe that looks a little more like an equal sign. So we started out with just a force exerted tangent to the surface. Um, when it acts through an angle, that's a torque. Um, the, the work done is the torque times the angle, and so we had to calculate that. Um, once we had the torque, we could calculate the rotation inertia once I, I gave you the mass. And so you can, you can get the rotation inertia out of that. That allows you to calculate the angular acceleration because the angular acceleration is the torque divided by the rotation inertia. Once you have this guy, you can use the kinematic equation to determine uh, omega. And then, um, and then once you have omega, you can calculate the kinetic energy.